Ooh, God, it's really cold. Hello, Captain Polar. What are you doing here? It's freezing. Of course, you're a polar bear. You don't mind, do you? No, I... What's that? Oh, I should introduce myself. Oh, oh yes, hello. Oh, well, listen, my name is... Oh, introduce you first. Okay, I'll introduce Captain Polar. This is Captain Polar, the polar bear. Um, he's quite a celebrity. Um, he's been around the world learning all about climate change. And he knows how to sail a boat, you see. That's why he's called a captain. And, um, well, Captain Polo's mission is really to find out as much as possible about global warming around the world. He's on this mission because his home, the Arctic, where we are now, is actually melting. It looks cold, but during the summer months, the Arctic melting is very serious. The ice is, is disappearing, and this is affecting polar bears and the other animals in, the, in that region. Uh, because they can't hunt anymore, they can't sleep anymore, they can't even stand up anymore. So this is what Captain Polo is all about. Right, now it's my turn to introduce myself. My name is Alan J. Hesse. I'm a conservationist and I'm also an author and illustrator of comic books. And my books are all about the environment, especially climate change. I love to teach this subject through comic books because it's so much more fun than a scientific textbook. Really, teach them how to do it. What, make their own comic book? Right now? Well, Captain Polo says that I should teach you how to make your very own comic books so that you can teach everyone about climate change. What do you think of that? Hey, What's that? Just get on with it. All right, all right, all right. When did he get so bossy? Ooh, it really is freezing here. Polo, listen to me. I'm going to go and teach the comic workshop now, okay? So you stay here and uh, mess about on the ice, and I'll just go into my studio, all right? So be good. I'll see you later. All right. Bye for now. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello again. Now, a comic book is really just a story. You don't need to be great at drawing. What you need is a good story. That means you can use stick figures and simple shapes, okay? Um, what you'll need for a comic is, of course, a pencil. I like to use these graphite pencils, but you can use any pencil. You'll need an eraser or rubber like this one. And when you get to the stage where you are finishing your comic, you'll need to trace over your pencil marks with black ink. I like to use different sizes of nibs. Uh, you've got a very fine nib, you've got a middle nib, and you've got thicker nibs. Don't go too far on the nibs. You need to keep it quite steady. Have a, you know, keep a, a medium-sized nib uh, pretty much will, will be good for the, whole, for the whole book. Remember, a comic or graphic novel is a story. You don't need to be good at drawing to make one, especially when your story is about something as important as climate change. A comic has three main elements. A main character, a problem or mission for the character to deal with, and obstacles to that happening, things that get in the way. Those are the basics. As you get better at making comics, you'll need to create other characters and different settings, which is where the action is happening in different parts of the story. Depending on how well you draw, you can make your character very unique, like Captain Polo, or just a stick figure. Stick figures are easy to draw, and by putting the legs and arms at different angles can actually be quite expressive, especially if you put a face on them. You can add hair, hats, and all sorts of things in a stick figure. I'm sure that by playing around with them, you'll find that you can actually draw pretty well. This is the basic structure of any story, and that means comics too. The beginning is where you set the scene. What's going on? Who are the main characters? What are they up to? And what do they want to do? Is there anything they're worried about? The middle bit is where most of the action happens. Think of this part as a roller coaster ride. One minute your character's doing great. Next minute they're suddenly doing not so great. This can mean whatever you want it to. For example, the character is dancing happily, but suddenly slips on a banana skin and falls into the dinner table, upsetting all the food everywhere. Since your subject is about climate change, you'll want to make the middle part of the comic all about the things your character discovers and understands, the problems they see as well as the solutions, all the things that can be done to help the environment. What I like to do is mix all that in with fun, humor, and adventure to make a good story. The ending is always the hardest part for me. Basically, there are two ways you can end your comic story.
close it by having the character solve the problem or achieve their mission, or leave it open. I actually prefer leaving it open. That leaves the reader guessing what will happen next. Of course, when you use an open ending, it means you have to continue the story in a following comic. This is a great idea when you make a series, like the Adventures of Captain Polo books. Here are some examples of the beginning, middle and endings in my own comics about Captain Polo and climate change. These are the first two pages in the first Captain Polo book of the series. It's always important to make your main character appear right away on the first page. Here we see Captain Polo, who's not a captain yet by the way, trying to hunt his favourite food, a nice juicy walrus. This is part of the setting. The main character appears in his natural habitat, the Arctic, doing what his species, polar bears, do best, which is hunt walrus. The next page starts to reveal the problem our character is facing, melting ice. At this point, we don't need to explain why ice is melting. That's something Polo himself will discover as the story unfolds. The thing to notice on this page is how the story transitions from the beginning to the start of the middle. The setting changes from the Arctic and a melting piece of ice to a pub in Cornwall in which a fishing crew is discussing another problem, how cod is disappearing in the Atlantic Ocean. This problem is related to the first one. Both are caused by global warming. Again, at this stage, the reader doesn't necessarily know that, but these relationships will start to link up as the story progresses. The bit about the cod is also an example of how I started bringing in my research into the story. These next two pages are the part of the middle of the book, and you start to see some action and fun stuff, but also more information about climate change. On these two pages, Polo witnesses a sleigh accident caused by melting ice a problem he's already experienced, even if he hasn't thought much about it yet. Polo, being very strong, saves the Inuits and their sleigh and stays the night to camp while they tell him all about how climate change is affecting them. Can you see how I'm bringing in the research? When things get too technical, you can always put a footnote on the page to explain in a bit more detail. I do this a lot. Next day, Polo sets off again to immediately run into yet another climate change problem which is revealed on the next page. Notice how the page ends with a moment of suspense. Polo sees something that shocks him, but he doesn't know what it is. We don't know what it is either until we turn the page. The surprise in a story could be anything at all, but you need to keep things in line with your subject. It wouldn't make much sense for this story about climate change for Polo to suddenly meet a spaceship, for example. So as you'll see if you read the book one day, the, prob the, the thing that surprised Polo is another climate change problem, coming from the research. This is what I mean by the roller coaster ride for the middle bit of your story. Here's how book one of the Captain Polo comic series ends. There's a lot of technical stuff from the research here, but the main thing is to notice what happens on the last page. Disaster strikes for Polo. His boat is run over and destroyed by a massive fishing vessel and the fishing captain sees the chance of making money by selling this polar bear to the zoo back home. This is an example of an open ending. When you read this, you probably want to know what happens next. The reason the fishermen are Chinese is because of the setting of this part of the story. Polo is in a part of the world patrolled by lots of Chinese fishing boats. The Chinese words that appear are real. I translated the English into Chinese using Google Translate. Now that we've looked at how to structure your comic and seen a few examples, it's time to see how to actually start making it. I use these seven basic steps. For now, we'll just look at steps one and two. First, you need to decide what your comic is going to be about. For example, it can be about climate change or a particular aspect of climate change. Then you need to get some technical information for your subject, some facts. This is the research phase. This is probably something you do at school with the help of your teacher. I do most of my research online, but I also read scientific papers and articles, and I interview climate change experts. Being a conservation scientist myself, I also already know quite a bit about environmental topics. You can also research online and by using your school library. For this exercise, I suggest you make a list of no more than five technical things you want to include in your story. I'll let you get on with that for now. Pause the video and I'll come back when you're ready. 
Welcome back. By now, you should know what your comic is going to be about, and you should have a handy list of facts about it from your research. Now the fun begins, because you're going to get creative. In part two of this presentation, I'll show you how to develop your story and characters and fit them together with your research. We're going to complete steps two and three of this list. Think about your story. What happens? What do the characters do? How can you bring the facts from your research into it? For example, your main character could be a climate activist who goes to visit an oil rig in the ocean. The villain might be the owner of the rig. What happens? What do your characters say? Remember, a good story needs to be exciting. It could also be funny. So here's your next task. First, answer the three questions you see here. Write down your answers. Use your imagination. Your story can go anywhere you want, and your characters can be people, animals, monsters, whatever you want. Have fun with it. Next, you need to plan your comic. Get a piece of paper, or you can use a computer, and make three columns. Title the columns beginning, middle, and ending. In each column, write out your idea on what happens in that part of your story. Don't forget to bring in those facts from the research. It doesn't matter if you don't include them all. Pause the video and come back when you've finished doing these two things. Now that you've written out roughly how your story goes and what your characters do and say, it's time to bring everything together and start drawing. We do this by making what's called a storyboard. A storyboard is what filmmakers use, and it's also really useful for making comics. Think of it as a map that lays out what happens in what order, who says what and in what order. My storyboards, like the one here, tend to be quite detailed, but you don't need to do it this way at all if it doesn't come naturally. Here's an example of a much simpler storyboard using stick figures and simple shapes. Yours can look something like this if you want to. Notice the speech bubbles with the numbers. This is a coding system I use. The numbers refer to the dialogues that I've written out separately. This way, you always know who says what and in what order. This is actually important because one of the rules of making a comic is that you can't have your characters saying things out of order. Look at this example. Can you see how the correct version is the one on the right? When we use a language like English, we read from left to right, from up to down, not the other way round. Now, I learned the hard way that not planning this out in advance with a storyboard causes a lot of headaches later on. The rule of thumb is when you lay out your comic using the storyboard, Think like the person who will be reading the comic. It's really important that the comic be easy to read. Now, I do my comics using programs, uh, a program called Adobe InDesign and uh, Photoshop. Um, that enables me to get that really professional look. For this practice session, you can go ahead and make your storyboard right now to gain time. However, when I make my comics to publish, I make one more step first. On a computer, I create a more detailed version of those three columns you made earlier, like this example right here. This is how I planned out my latest release, book four in the Captain Polo series. This detailed process allows me to plan out each frame or panel so that I know exactly what I'll be drawing inside it, what dialogues or what narrative they may be, who says what, in what order. In this way, I can plan out the whole comic book from beginning to end before actually starting to draw it. Note the numbers in the frame column. These are like a code for each frame, which is what I call each little box making up the comic. And see how the numbers are to the left, centered, or on the right. That shows me at a glance where that frame is located on the page. Here's what I'm talking about. This is not the storyboard so much as a very simple map of the whole book. It's very useful to plan everything out and avoid mistakes. These boxes you don't fill, you just have them numbered, it just shows you the layout of the pages. For example, you see that not all the frames are the same size. The double frames are used to draw scenes that need that kind of shape, like a street scene for example. You can shape and size your frames however you want. The idea is that they allow you to tell your story. Some comics use frames that take up a whole page, others have frames that overlap. There really is no limit. Unless you have time to do these things right now though, go ahead and make your storyboard using stick figures and simple shapes. Make sure you leave plenty of room in your frames to put speech bubbles and text boxes in. Let me show you.
Once you've sketched out your storyboard like this, you can then go and add the detail, like the speech bubbles, the noises, uh, all the action movements. And when you're happy with that, then you can trace over it with the black ink markers I showed you earlier. Now it's your turn. Pause this video and finish your comic. That's how you make a comic, at least that's how I do it. Now every author and illustrator and artist will have their own way of doing things, and I'm sure you will too. But this is a good way to start. Remember, comics are a great way of learning and teaching about important subjects like global warming, climate change, and all kinds of other subjects as well. You can make your own comics to teach other people. Um, maybe you want to make your own comic to teach your parents, for example. That would be a great Christmas present. Think about it. Oh, hello. Here's Captain Polo back with us again. What's that? Oh, yes. Captain Polo has reminded me to tell you about my own comic books all about climate change, featuring the adventures of Captain Polo, of course. These books are great because Polo goes all around the world learning about climate change, global warming, and all kinds of other things, but he also has a lot of adventures. There's a lot of fun in these books. They're very funny, and Polo meets all kinds of people and animals. He even has a conversation with the Yeti in the Himalayas. So I think they're great. I think you'll enjoy them. Um, and here they are right here. These are the covers, and you can see the links, and we'll talk about that a little later. That's right, Polo. Yes, they should. But you can always get in touch with us through our website, of course, right? Uh, the website link is right here. You'll find lots of cool stuff on there. There's a lot of free things to download as well. And uh, Polo's got his blog, which he's very proud about. Yes, that's right. You've got your own blog. And so you can learn about climate change through the blog. There are videos. There, all the books are listed there. And you can certainly get in touch with Polo directly as well. So do check it out. Polo also has his own fan club. And it's really great because when you join the fan club, you get to download the free board game. It's a really cool board game. We've played this game in schools and uh, all the instructions are included. And it's basically based on the books. And you learn all about what's going on around the world, but you also have a lot of fun. And so that board game is a free thing to download. You can also download the free uh, version of the book one of the series, which is an ebook. You can get that for free as well from the website. You just have to follow the links. So I think you'll, you'll enjoy that and do check them out. And we, we hope to see you there. I hope you like this video. Uh, we have it up on our YouTube channel. Polo has his own YouTube channel. I have my YouTube channel. Uh, Polo has got some good videos of him on his visit to Ecuador, where he talks about glaciers, where we talk about rising sea levels and all kinds of interesting things about the Andes. So you can check those out. Those are on our YouTube channel. So make sure you follow us and subscribe and um, get in touch if you have any questions by email. And so that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and goodbye everybody. Goodbye, goodbye. Say goodbye, Polo. Goodbye, bye-bye, bye-bye.